Nigeria, but we had uh, registrations from, I believe, about 15 different countries. Um, wonderful. Okay, the recording has started. So uh, today's introduction session is going to be run by uh, two of us, uh, my partner, co-founder, and me, Yebabel, uh, Antai, and uh, me, Arun Sharma. And then we're going to be handing it over. We're going to jump straight into the challenge. Um, we have a quick presentation, but uh, before anything else, welcome. We really appreciate your time. And more than anything, I think we value your willingness to or your enthusiasm in upgrading your skills and we're here to help you take a step ahead in your career journey so the reason why we as an organization 10 academy exist we exist to improve the employment and the employability of uh, people across africa with a focus on young people and this over the next 12 weeks we're going to be working together and you know, I'm happy to see some people with their cameras on. So anyone who's able to, you can turn your camera on. You don't need to, but it's nice to see. I can see Abdi and Sostin with their cameras on, showing us their nice hairstyles and good backgrounds. We have Feasayo with his camera on, Colajo, Gitere, Mekonen, Kibru, Mekesa, Kiteme, Beruk. There's no ladies with their cameras on. Gitere, um, Helena, see some... Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Malaku. Yeah, everyone has some pretty, uh, Mikesa has some, Nibiu has his hand up, but not his camera on. <laughs> Maybe he pressed the wrong button. Uh, Leah has her camera on as well. Mawuli. I'm not sure why I'm leaning in. Maybe it helps to uh, look at the names. So yeah, look, it's really wonderful to have you here. Uh, it's, oh, this name, I always struggle with. Gitsina, Gitsina. It's a Rwandan name, and I think that one I find a little a little bit hard. Gilbert is there. Emilian, how do you say Gitsina properly? Is it Gitsina or Gitsina? It's it's Gitsina. Oh, okay. I, I'm not gonna try that one. I'm gonna hurt myself if I try and it's say it. Yeah, it's a bit hard to pronounce. <laughs> well, it's either very hard or very easy, but no, thanks for that. Yeah. All right, look guys, it's wonderful to have you here. Uh, we are not a typical organization in many ways. Uh, we want our training to be very community rich. Um, we're here to improve. Uh, we're here for the really a single minded goal. We want you to have a better career outcome. And what we've learned along the way is that by being open and being social and working together and helping each other, that goes a really long way to improving uh, everyone's career outcome. So I think uh, what you'll find is that we're quite a open group, you can always uh, ask questions. Um, we would ask that you stay on mute if you're not talking, uh, Gitsina, because we can hear your background. Um, we don't wanna hear your your neighbors calling you. Yeah, okay, so wonderful, thanks. It's great that you're here. I'm gonna just uh, provide a quick overview of uh, what to expect over the next 12 weeks and a little bit more about the philosophy um, of, of our organization and what we've done over the past. Yevabel is also going to come in and uh, he's going to be running after this session a much longer session providing an introduction to the weekly challenge and so I think I'll go first and then hand over to Yevabel as well. Um, throughout whenever you have questions then feel free to just um, put your hand up you can use this function that Google Meet so nicely provides um, or you can also just type it in the chat box we'll have time at the end for a Q&A session as well. Um, I'm just going to look at the chat box here. Khadija, go ahead. Okay, good morning. Good so, morning. Um, I've been trying to log in because I know that we were told I will be granted access to log in this morning. So, um, although I've been trying to log in before, just to familiarize myself with the thanks um, page, I'll be up. But it's telling me that invalid um, invalid username. So I tried to, this morning when they told me I have access, I tried to log in with my email. It was telling me invalid, um, incorrect password. So I tried to forget password. And I tried to log in again, and I was able to change my password. I tried to log in again. Sorry, Tahir, could you, un could you mute yourself, please, Tahir? OK. Are you with me? Yeah, I can hear you. So um, I've changed my password, but I'm still unable to log in. I don't know why this is happening. 
Can you, I was going to ask you if you can tell us your password for all of your banking, then we can resolve this all together. No, I'm just joking. Um, so if you have that issue, then what I would ask you to do is to write to utj at henacademy.org and the team there will be able to respond to your questions. So if there's a password issue, if there's a login issue, um, I see Colajo is saying he had the same issue and he's now able to log in. So can you, can, can you, can you tell me the email again? U T U the number two, Jay, I'm going to type okay. it in. I'm going to type it in the chat box. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're most welcome. And if you're able to log into Slack, and I think the Slack logins should be working, then once you log into Slack, um, I believe we have a 10x support channel. And if we don't, you can we'll create a 10x support channel right away, and okay. you can you can ask questions there. All right. Thank you very yeah, much. No, no problem. We're we're going to sort out all of those issues. As mentioned, this is the first time we're doing this training at this scale, so uh, it may take today to sort these issues out. There was someone else who had a question had just put their hand up and now it's down are there any other questions in the meantime questions around access questions around why are we here shalom shalom princess joseph are you there yes yes good morning um, good morning I, my question is uh, uh, around the documents. There was a technical document sent via email. Yep. And I've been able to access it. It's, it's going to come email. back. Yeah, okay. it's, it's going to be available after this, uh, after this introduction call. And okay. uh, yeah, it'll be available. All right, thank you. Yeah. Collagio, you said the document is empty. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be filled up. Or the yeah, it'll be made available again. If he uh, so, I have a request for everyone. If you if I say your name incorrectly, help me out by saying your name correctly when you start speaking, because we have people from different countries. If a if a Yinwa, yeah, if a Yinwa, that name. Thank okay. you so much. I've been unable to um, go into the Slack channel. It keeps telling me that there is no workspace found for the 10x so okay so it, there's it. there's two different things there's the 10x platform and then there's the slack channel so yeah. this if you're is it your slack your slack login that's not working the slack login is working but there is no um 10x space workspace there. uh there's no 10x. So are you able to log into Slack? So let me actually just log into Slack if yes, I can. Yes, yes. Uh, I have two channels I'm working with on Slack, but your workspace isn't accessible. Your workspace is not accessible. Are you able to? So, so if you are, are you, maybe are you using the same email? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so so just to confirm, if a Yin White, and again, sorry for not saying the name correctly, you're logged into Slack, is that right? Yes, I'm logged into Slack. I have the app on my phone. Okay, so then what I would I, what I would ask you to do is go. To, you can post a message in the 10x support channel, and we'll be able to support you there. So if you're able to log into Slack, I think that's uh, that's the starting point. It's so we use two different platforms. Just to be clear for everyone. Um, Slack is our communications platform, and we've created our own learning management system, which is uh, similar to Google Classroom. And so that's that's what we call the 10x, so T-E-N-X, the number 10 written out in words, the letter X, all in lowercase, the 10x platform. You need to be logged into both. I believe that many of you are facing issues in logging into 10x. So if you have any questions, there's a channel on Slack called 10x support so you can post your issues there and the team is going to be working we're going to be working with you to resolve those issues today lorraine go ahead uh, hi i actually don't have a question but i have a request Could, is it possible to leave the questions to work for the end of the meeting because i want to attend this brief because i have to get back to work <clears throat> yeah i think that's a great suggestion 
So let's let's go ahead with the briefing and then with the introduction, and then we can use the end for Q and A. Um, for any sort of issues, any sort of technical issues, or any sort of other questions, the Slack uh, space is our primary mode of interaction. Um, you will always find the team, tutoring team, the technical team, the careers team. We will all be available on Slack. And if you don't get an answer to your questions, we're going to be going through in this presentation who to reach out for, who to reach out to for different parts of the presentation. Yeah, so if there are no other burning questions, I'm just going to go ahead into the presentation. Thanks for that, Lorraine. Um, so welcome, everyone. This is uh, what we call the University to Jobs program. So we yes. designed... Sorry, is somebody speaking? Maybe no? Grace. Yeah, no, it's muted now. Biniam, I think you're also unmuted. Biniam, Zedu, and Grace, any, any burning issues? If not, then I would just ask you to mute just so we keep the background noise to a minimum. Okay, wonderful. So welcome everyone. Welcome to the 10 Academy University to Jobs program. This is the first time we're doing this program. Uh, it's the culmination of seven years of work and it, we're adding on to the intensive training work that we've been doing since 2017. So the goal, our goal with this program is to make a uh, training which is open to everybody, regardless of any uh, prerequisite knowledge. And what we want to support you in or what we want to help you improve is your ability to use AI uh, as it applies to project management. And the thinking that we really had when we set out to conceive this program was how can uh, we help any, any person uh, anywhere in Africa figure out how they can use some of the AI tools that everybody has heard about from tools like ChatGPT and competitors like um, Microsoft Copilot, Google Gemini, um, whichever other products, but we can call all of these the generative AI tools like ChatGPT or no code tools like Airtable or Notion or many of the other co-pilots or assistants, but to help use that um, to improve your employability, to help you get ahead in the world of work. And that's what we're really providing uh, as part of this training. So I want to give you a quick background about 10 Academy. Um, so, so far we have 172 graduates from 19 different countries. Uh, our, this is all related to our intensive training, which is our flagship program. And that's a much, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a different program. It's uh, six months long and that expects between about 60 hours a week. Whereas with the UTJ program, we're expecting about 20 hours a week. But uh, we've graduated 172 people. 95% of those people have matched into jobs within 12 months. We have about 36% uh, of our graduates who are women. This year, 2024, we're training over 1,000 people, um, which is a big jump for us. So we currently have, if we include the 400 people in UTJ, plus um, we have two batches of intensive training that's running, and we have another uh, 50 person batch of trainees, um, which are starting in a specialized program for um, fintech engineers. So this year we're going to be training about 1,200 people. Um, we did an impact report and we found, and this is only for our intensive training, that through the training that we were able to provide, each and every person uh, gained an average or an estimated projected lifetime increase of salary of between 1.5 and 5 million US dollars. So because of the work that they were able to do and the new types of jobs that they were, they were able to access, they uh, were able to access a very large jump or increase in salary. We are a not-for-profit organization. Um, we are registered in the United States, in California. Our team headquarter, uh, the majority of our team is based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and we have team members uh, in Nigeria, Rwanda, Kenya. I'm based in Germany, so we have people in different places. <laughs> So while our registration is in the US, um, and we have also a registration in other countries, including Germany and Ethiopia, our team is headquartered in Addis, and then we have presence in other countries. Just a request, please, everyone, uh, make sure you're on mute, just so there's no background noise, as we have quite a large call. We have about 130 people on the call right now. Um, so donors to the organization, we're very, for we're very fortunate. Uh, this training is being supported by an organization called uh, the GitLab Foundation. I think most people have heard of GitHub. So GitLab is a GitHub competitor. And uh, this program, the tuition fees for this program, 
are being provided by the GitLab Foundation. We've also been supported by Eric Schmidt's uh, foundation, the Schmidt Futures Organization. Eric Schmidt is the former CEO of Google. Um, we're currently being supported by Jeff Dean. Uh, if you don't know who he is, you can look him up. But uh, Jeff Dean and his wife, uh, the Hopper Dean Foundation, uh, have provided support to Ten Academy. He's Google's chief scientist. The MasterCard Foundation, uh, Peter Thiel versus the Emerging Ventures Program, the Wellcome Trust, and UNESCO. So all of this support has been provided to us to help us further our mission of, improve, of improving the employability of young people across Africa. So this is a quick map of placements. Again, this is uh, really for the intensive training because that's what we've been focused on to date, but you get a view of the types of companies and also the places where people are working, the com where the companies are based. Um, the majority of people remain at home working remotely, but the companies are based in every continent around the world. Um, yeah, I think we have North America, South America, quite a presence across Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia as well. We don't have Antarctica yet. Uh, I don't expect us to get to Antarctica. Um, so what are our goals for this program? So we have two goals for this program. The first is how to help you understand how AI can accelerate your career. And a really simple example is um, if you understand how to use AI tools professionally, then it is now possible in some cases to reduce the amount of time that it takes to do something like analyze data, like to write a report, to do research, and you can probably reduce the time by, in the right cases, if you use it properly, by 90%. So what does that mean? That means what we believe is that if your manager or your boss, uh, your team asks uh, who's able to get something done, if you understand how to use tools that are freely available today, you may be able to get, or in many cases, you will be able to get what used to take 10 hours done in something like one hour. And in a very simple one-line summary, that's how I understand what we're trying to provide you with, to give you an understanding and access and experience, not just a theoretical understanding, but over the next 12 weeks, you will be using these tools over and over and over again, so that by the end of the 12 weeks, you not only understand, but you're fluent with and you're familiar with and you can demonstrate how you can um, use AI to accelerate your career in terms of getting work done faster, in terms of getting work done to a higher standard of quality, in terms of being able to access and process um, much more information than you would be able to do by hand. And an analogy that I like to use is if we imagine AI as uh, you know, like a truck, how many, one person can drive a truck which could carry the weight that it used to take maybe 100 people to carry. So in a way, the you understanding how AI is used gives you the ability to deploy something like a truck versus your colleagues or your competitors or other people who are applying for jobs. They're busy carrying that water, or carrying those goods by hand. And so by the end of the 12 weeks, you're gonna understand how to use AI to accelerate your career. And the second is, we want to help you understand how you how to grow in your career. And there's three parts to that. One is a culture of uh, career growth. The second is a community of people. So these are other people that um, you can work with, that you can rely on, that you can depend on, you can speak with. And the third and probably the most important is the confidence that you need in order to grow in your career. So the goal for this week, um, one is we want, sorry, is there a question? No? Okay. So goal number one for this week is to get used to the training rhythm. Um, I think our approach is very, very simple, but we want everyone to get used to that. The second is to get as many people onboarded onto the training method as possible. So we want every single person that signed up for the training to take part in the training. Um, other people as well, if you know somebody else who's interested in, uh, you know, today, if you say, look, I have a colleague who didn't sign up, but they're interested, let us know and we'll see if we can get them on board. And the third is we want every single person or as many people as possible to submit the uh, challenge. And that's actually a goal that we have every single week. A couple of notes. This is our first time doing training at this scale. Our intensive training is normally limited to about 50 people at a time. This is the first time that we're going uh, into the few hundreds. 
So we're going to have some learnings along the way. We can see that um, there's already some questions around what's the best way to log into the 10x platform. We have no doubt that there's going to be a number of other questions. Um, our commitment is that the team is available and we will work uh, to solve every single issue as fast as we can. Just reach out to us. I think Slack is probably the most efficient and effective way. We have different channels set up um, to answer whichever questions may come up. So um, just be aware it's our first time and we're going to be addressing every single issue that we're able to, which comes up. So your first contacts, uh, just to let you know who's the right person to contact in which case. So the overall responsible for this training is uh, Makita. I don't know if she has her camera on. Makita, if you're there, maybe you can uh, turn your camera on. Just say hello. Or at least say hello. You're on mute, Makita. Oh, hey, guys. OK, so that's Makita. So that's she's your last point or your first point of contact. If there's anything, any questions you have, reach out to Makita on Slack. Um, Nagnail Malese is your first point of contact for anything as it relates to content. Okay. OK, there's Nagnail. I don't know if he has his camera on, but yeah, OK. Miriam, Miriam's your first point of contact for anything related to careers. Miriam, are you there? Miriam, are you there? Okay, maybe Miriam's not able to speak. Kolajo yeah. Makita yeah. is on. She's ah, okay. Hi, hi, Miriam. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so good I'm morning. Good morning. Okay. Yeah, great. Uh, somebody asked if they can see Makita. She's logged in as 10 Academy team. Um, so you can see Makita there. I can even pin her for everyone. No, I can't pin her for everyone, but she's there. And then uh, Emilian. Emilian has big headphones on. You can see him also logged in as 10 Academy team. Yeah, we. your, your uh, lighting is funny, Emilian. We can see your shadow, but... Uh, if this was a Marvel movie, I guess this would be how they introduce one of the characters. We can't see the, any details of your face, but we see your shadow. And then uh, first point of contact for the 10X platform is Barakat. I don't know if Barakat's on, online, but uh, Barakat and the team and the 10X team, it's quite a large team. We've developed the platform ourselves. And so Barakat and the team will be uh, there to support any questions around the 10X platform. Uh, I'm going to ask Oda Kanmi to just mute because there's a little bit of noise from your connection. Rhoda, do you have a question? Rhoda Osai Asuming? Osai, sorry. Rhoda, you have your hand up? No, OK. So what does the training look like? We're going to have 12 weeks. And uh, what we've done and what we will continue to do is to develop, and sorry, there's a little bit of a mistake here. So I'm going to just remove this. This is actually from a different training. Um, we're going to have, uh, what we've done is we want to, uh, so we have close connection with industry um, from in terms of the, the partners that we have um, who are actually hiring from Tan Academy, but also the research work that we do in constantly staying up to date on what employers are looking for. So working backwards, when we understand what industry is looking for, we're able, what we do is design the uh, weekly challenges in such a way that each challenge responds to something that you're likely to face when you actually get into industry. So we're going to have probably 12 challenges that might go down. We may have some longer challenges. They may be two weeks long. Um, Odakani, are you able to mute? Sorry, there's a bit of a kind of a, a crinkle. Ah, now we can see Emilia. Can't you change your location? Um, so we've we might have some challenges that span more than one week, but each challenge is going to be a, a scenario that'll be similar to what you face in the industry. Now the exciting part is that at the end of the week, you're going to have something which you're able to show as part of your profile. You're able to add to your CV. 
if you uh, use a platform like GitHub, as we're going to encourage many of you to do, or other uh, platforms that you can use to showcase the work that you've done, you would be able then to say to an employer or to your current employer, or when you're applying for a job or interviewing, you can say, I don't only know how to use ChatGPT to write a report, but here are six examples where I've gone ahead and actually written a report. Or I don't just know how to use um, a tool like Google Data Studio to uh, ingest and to visualize and build a dashboard for you in one hour, but here are three or four examples where I've done that before. Or I don't just know how to show use a tool like Airtable or Notion. It's not just theoretical knowledge, but these will be demonstrable pieces of uh, projects that you're able to showcase. So every week in the training, and so we're going to have 12 challenges, or about 10, depending on if some of the challenges are a bit longer, we start by saying, what is industry looking for today in April 2024? And then we design the challenges to allow you to um, work on challenges that are relevant to industry and make sure that those are demonstrable when you uh, go for an interview or when you speak to your current employer or when you are doing work as part of your daily work. And why do we do that? Because we're here to improve uh, your employability and your state of employment. And what we've learned is that the ability to showcase what you're actually doing today or be the ability to showcase what you are working on is um, it's, a, it's very useful. It also is in line with our approach, which is we don't have exams. We only have these projects. And that means that you must be learning by doing and through by evaluating what it is that you did um you're you will not only be learning but we we're able to evaluate to what extent have you acquired skills aspects of knowledge and competencies we're also going to be having uh additional challenges or additional parts of the training which are focused on developing your careers materials and improving your careers materials um topics like how to ask good questions how to be curious how to be a good peer mentor um, and so then we'll, in addition to that, we'll have guest talks, careers challenges, and community challenges. So what we, well, the way we've designed this program is that uh, in about 20 hours a week, and what we're imagining is that people will spend a couple of hours a day on a weekday and then be working on the weekends, in a couple of, in about 20 hours a week, over three months, by the end of that three months, you should have not only an understanding but you will have experience and demonstrable experience in how you can use artificial intelligence tools, including tools like generative AI, ChatGPT, and competitors, um, no-code solutions like Airtable, the Notion, and others, and finally, co-pilot tools to um, improve your employability and to learn how to do high-quality project management. After the training, we're looking forward to you joining our alumni community we will have further training opportunities. Um, and as this is the first time we're doing this, then um, yeah, we have to figure out exactly what those post-employment pathways look like. Our dream is to have a network of people across the continent who are 10 Academy alumni. And we know that within those uh, few hundred and very soon a few thousand people will be uh, the, some of the future transformative people who will be leading change uh, in their countries, in their regions, and on the continent. And so we want to stay in touch with you and we want to network you with each other. So we need to figure out what's the best way to do that, but uh, that's part of what we're looking for forward to post-training. I just need five more minutes. I just want to work through, walk through um, our tips on how to be successful in the training. And we've learned this over, we've now done, we're in the middle of our eighth batch of intensive training. Um, and what we've seen is that there are five things you need to do to be successful. The first is to work hard. And so what we've seen is that it doesn't matter how clever you are, it doesn't matter how well you are, how well read you are, or how well networked you are. Number one is you need to put the work in. There's simply no shortcut to putting the time, the effort, and the work in. We would like you to try everything. Many of our trainees, they don't, they are not successful because they exclude themselves. They look at something and they say, you know what, this is too hard for me, or it's too difficult for me, or I'm not a fit, and they're just not going to do it, or they don't try, or they don't handle it. So please, to be successful, number one, put the work in, 
try everything. And even if you're not sure how good it is, please do hand it in because you'll be surprised how many times uh, people's work is better than they expect, or they're only one step away from being, uh, being at the last stage. So put the work in, try everything, and do hand everything in. Number two is to be curious. So we're going to be exposing you to a lot of different topics, but there's a lot more that you could learn. So that developing that curiosity comes from a mindset of maximizing learning. So if you're, we will be having a leaderboard just to give people feedback. You will be getting uh, grades as per a rubric, but actually that curiosity and trying to, we can't cover all of the material given the rather short amount of time that we have, about 240 to 250 hours. We can't cover all of the material, but we're going to be exposing you to a lot of different things, but it's your curiosity which is going to drive you to learn more about what you're interested in and what you believe to be important. Number three, we are a community-driven learning enterprise. The learning at Ten Academy is not somebody off by him or herself or on YouTube or reading from a book. This is a community-driven training. This is why we have the daily stand-ups. We use Slack as a communication platform. You will be working in groups. That community-driven learning is really important. So helping others is one of the best ways for you to learn yourself because it forces you to be specific about what you do and you don't. Number two, please do teach others and let others teach you. Um, so by asking questions and also by answering other people's questions, you will help build a community and solidify your own knowledge. I want to make one point there. If there's something you don't know, I would request each and every person to ask. We have, for this week, use the All Week One channel and ask a question. And I can guarantee you that in less than five minutes, and in many cases faster, you will get an answer. And in many cases, you'll have a handful of people answering your questions. So instead of suffering alone or suffering in silence, ask the question and you will get help and you will also be helping the other people who are too shy to ask. So please do depend on your community. Extending your network and building deep connections is important, especially outside of uh, those people you don't know, you know in real life. Collaborating with others, so when you divide up the work and conquer it, you'll get further. Building trust with others is also an important skill. And then just having just talking with other people, collaborating, building a community, and having a discussion. Um, number four, a bias to self-learning. So when you're working, many employers want you to figure out what it is that you can do. And because you have access to this incredible source of knowledge called the internet, um, which is it gives you as much knowledge as somebody based in New York City, or in Shanghai, or in Mumbai, or in Lagos, the internet allows you to say, I am curious about something and I would like to learn more about it. So instead of asking, you should be asking questions, but this the ownership of your learning and wanting to not just um, be told what to do, but to ask to teach yourself something um, is very important. And we find that to be one of the biggest distinguishing factors between somebody who is stagnant, stagnant at work and somebody who is growing quickly at work. And so understand what it is that you don't know and learn how to get there. And we're going to be covering this in terms of asking good questions, because while I'm saying, you know, if you don't know what to do, then ask a question, you will quickly learn. And we'll probably cover this in about week six. There's a difference between asking a question like, I don't know what to do, tell me what to do, versus asking a very good question, which is, I understand this is where I am uh, in my learning journey. I think these are what the options are. This is what I've tried. And you ask a question which is, uh, it shows that you've actually put some self, uh, self reflection and self learning into the process. And finally, um, we think professionalism is very important. So this is a professional training. Uh, we do expect you to be professional. Um, we hope, we know that many people are working in parallel, absolutely fine, um, but professionalism for us, means showing up to as many sessions as possible and be ready with questions at those sessions, ideally. Doing your own work, absolutely essential. Collaboration is fine. Talking with other people is fine. Learning from what they've done is fine. But copying and not understanding what they did or copying and simply just doing a full cut and paste is not your own work. So every single person must do his or her own work. One of the challenges with tools, uh, some of these modern AI tools, is that to it's very easy to copy poorly. 
um, it's by the time you copy well to an extent, like writing a good prompt or using a tool like ChatGPT to prompt well, that is, it's actually doing your own work. It's very hard to prompt that well. So that's part of the professionalism that we expect. And finally, just like when you're at work, your employer would ask you to leave the company better than when you joined it, we would ask you to do the same as part of our training program. If you have any questions about our approach, you can Slack me. I'm on Slack. I think it's not actually at our own, but you'll find me, or you can ask Mickey as well. Yeah, so that's uh, that's what I have. I want to hand over to my partner, to Yeva Bell, who's going to give you a different sort of introduction. Um, Rhoda, I don't know if you have a question. Your hand is still up. I suppose not. But yeah, thanks, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you on Slack and handing over to Yeva Bell. Thanks, thanks, Arun, and welcome everyone again. Um, I think you know it is. I'm taking over from Arun, who actually already finished most of the things that should be said in in this program uh, in Ten Academy in general. But I'm gonna um, give you a little bit of a different view, which is you know how do we identify content and training a strategy so that you will feel at least it's a general principle that we have. It's from day one um, that we have been designing. We knew that we have to make sure that it is short, it is appealing, and it's changing. And we focused a lot and iterated on our system, and we pretty much um, have that confidence it, it is making a difference, right? So I'm going to just jump to exactly that, um, that part. So I hope you see my screen. Yeah. Okay, so basically the, I mean, I hope that you see my screen, so I'm just gonna. Uh, we can see it. If, now. Yeah, if I have to summarize everything that we do, it is with this slide, right? It is about, you know, if you ask us it's what, it is still we are gonna be coming back to job. And usually our name 10 uh, was a lot more reflecting our, basically ambition. We want to make everything 10 times. Um, we are starting and expanding and 10 times means we know that we are demanding 60 hours a week. And that may not be visible, you know, feasible for many people who are already established in their um, whatever career. So we are expanding our training such that we impact not only just we aim only for one, which is 10 times, but also two times, three times, four times five times and that is also by itself uh, you know a, a match so we want to make sure that you are progressing in your career so the the training and it's the model is aiming to improve in that and it's also the why it is also again two times two from two to ten times life quality because you have a career progress and others that you get from us and then it's also the how is mostly we we come back again to the job and by saying we are trying to improve two to 10 times your salary, right? So if you really then want to understand about 10 Academy in general, a lot of it in the all questions, you will hear job and you will hear then how, why, and what are different by your career progress, by your life quality and by salary and others. So this one I would say is just the summary of our training. Then. You know, in and then how do we do it? So that's basically how do we then? This is the you know the the recipe. But how do we then uh, make sure we combine all this to formulate our curriculum and to formulate the training materials every week? It has another principles, uh, design principle, and that is of course we must match training to real life job situation. So nothing you will do with us is just for learning. We intentionally remove learning from the process such that you focus even in a, the scenarios and the challenge documents you receive, it's a scenario that you receive. Something like a scenario you get in a job and then someone is interested to, you know, they're not interested, you do work. Nobody's interested that you do work. Everybody's interested you do work and change them, right? So your the process of you working well, is not by itself a destiny, it is your work is affecting something and changing impacting something positively is what they are paying what they are paying you for so it's not just that you spend some time so it is that part of the real job situation mirroring and it is 
we know that if it is a very short training that it sh we should have impact in a smaller amount of time, then it must be also self-learning and community learning and outcomes and insights of the project are not just before learning exercises. They must, from day one, from like every element, from the wording to the actual grading, must be about value. Have you generated value? Have you generated value that is worth sharing? So value doesn't mean you know it is gone and and applied, but it is some somehow you you feel it, it is worth sharing. You have put effort to you know discover or create some value, however tiny and minuscule that is. And understanding value is at the essence of it, because as I said, what you are providing when someone is hiring you is value. And then of course not knowing what you know what makes all of this we are data driven because you know we are very humble to know that however our career progress in its own is okay but we don't know what works for everyone so what works for everyone and how we know is the scientific method and the scientific method is you know data driven uh, uh, way of doing is we know that's a scientific method so everything that we do is then data driven so that means in, including our uh, project design is data driven and we ask you also to be to have a mental set or a you know a mindset of data everything from your kind of thinking questioning to actually creating value that it is data driven um, and you you get the idea of or the essence of what it means data driven um, uh, process thinking or data driven strategy they have driven decision making and all of that you will see um, in, in throughout our uh, challenge. And then, of course, that is the, the design principle and the process and outcome principles are very, very easy. I think I already mentioned it. It must lead to financial freedom as fast as possible. It must provide an opportunity with less upfront costs because we are focused in Africa. We know the situation in Africa. It must not you know, cost you um hundred thousand dollars side that, that then you know that that doesn't you know however we we be, we believe we are making impact with that upfront cost nobody is going to change and therefore our opportunity must be um so at, at, as you see here it's a lot more we try to work hard to make sure that we are creating opportunity with basically no cost or by no cost it means that you, your time is the cost that you're paying and over time in different programs we also of course have some kind of paid forward model where just to continue and for sustainability we ask everyone who gets a job to actually pay for the next person uh, that is coming with them you know uh, so that they get the same opportunity but we don't try or we strive to really make sure that the upfront cost is basically minimal and then we also because we know where we are if you know a lot of the the places that we live in, and I live in, in Ethiopia in Addis, it is very much the ecosystem is not demanding. That means you learn something so expensive and good, but normally there isn't an ecosystem that demands it. That means it doesn't demand you to generate dashboard maybe, or you generate dashboard because you spend so much time, but then no one understands it, right? So there isn't an ecosystem that sometimes encourages so for you to keep growing. And we try to provide that ecosystem, given that everyone, you know, coming here and spending time and dedicating their time, learning and then applying it in their job. And we believe that through the Almonai network, as well as also through our training uh, platform, the social learning, we are creating that ecosystem of, uh, you know, fast learning the work culture that is applicable anywhere in the world. And we know also that infrastructure is an issue everywhere, power interruptions, internet interruptions, are reality we have to deal with them and therefore our training you know using slack means you can you know however power and internet is interrupted you can come back and read exactly what we're asked and we record everything in gmit and then it's shared again so you will never miss something because of the infrastructure but of course we ask you really to come back when you can and do it because res resilient uh, to unreliable infrastructure doesn't mean you know, it doesn't give you the, uh, you know, the the permission to just not look at the chats that has been happening in Slack or the gmits that are recorded that you missed. So it just means that our system or our training uh, is resilient uh, if your infrastructure, power, internet interrupts. So 
and uh, in basically the implementation drives drivers of course we are um we believe the best predictor of job performance are learners performance on the sub of the job itself so that means if you are now we are training you to be to to actually get a, a management like this uh, so we we, fo we will focus a lot more on applying ai to drive to accelerate so we almost always say personalized and acceleration and the opportunity of ai is nothing more than that i think arun gave a very good example of a truck you know instead of caring you know um, using yourself but caring with a truck you know how much it is accelerating you and the same is ai doing the same thing whatever you have been doing that we're taking like to write a report you know one week now with the right set of skill in ai and and, and prompt engineering you'll be able to do it probably in a couple of hours and that is acceleration of course we also try to make sure that you just don't get accelerated and then you do the you know the 10 hour work with one hour and spend the, the nine hour nothing but we also make sure that you learn how to spend the next nine hours you saved on something to drive your salary to drive your uh, life quality and to drive um, your career progress right so that is basically we our approach is that we constantly engage with industry engage with practitioners of different sorts like you know ai machine learning data web study anything that we actually do and as well as also we compose challenges based on tasks that these people do whoever so if your your target is to drive you know to basically become a good manager and apply good uh, project management um, skills and areas and therefore we engage with those people as well so, such that we get the best of um, those contents or the tasks that those the, the people who are performing it um you know what are the tasks they are doing and what is a predictor of what is a good project manager right so we we apply and then we take them and and put them as as tasks and therefore tasks are sampled from real life job activities so basically this is the last slide and it's also the summary of everything that i said so because of this what we are using is a competency model and it is a triangular uh, uh it is again it's not you know even if we actually discovered it ourselves but it is also there's also a formal um process around it and that was in a paper by uh Charles Horn, for example in 2010 but this our model actually is very much like you can say it is a anything that you can think of just a simplified but a very high impact model we assume that competency that you're going to develop are unmeasurable that means we can't even if we want to can't measure directly you know how competent you are becoming so we can't measure competency in itself directly but there are things that we measure for example knowing what competent people in that area as i said we we have connection with those people you know people that are at work and we sample from the job description and others so we know what people are looking for and what people are you know competent people are showing we take tasks from them and sample them and put them as you know tasks and then we gave it we give it to you as part of a challenge then we then what we observe is that we gave you the cha the challenge and the tasks and then you give us a response on that and that challenge is just basically be on you know be on time or perform this this analysis right so those are tasks different types of tasks and then we have your response how you respond to those tasks and what we have is a model that interprets your response against the task and that is basically the interpretation the scoring we score it and we make sure that our scoring is really directly of course related correlated to the competencies or other people do so that's the reliability validity and utility of that is measured and then that is then modeled with the competency and this iteration is what is what we call the 10x or the 10 academic trading model right so this is uh, what we do and i hope you have a clearer understanding of you know this very essentially very basic but at the same time what we have proved has a generalizable, um, you know, it's, this training model is generalizable and we believe it drives and we have seen it and proved it that, you know, it, it drives job or all of the, the career progress, the salary, as well as life quality, you know, 10 times. And that's our name as well. So let me stop there. And we will, of course, meet with uh, 
you know, just the challenge description, or I will I will take you through the challenge this week's challenge, and there we will have time to questions and others uh, throughout. You can also ask. And with that, just again, welcome and thank you. All right, thanks so much, everyone. We have time for Q and A. Um, we, in terms of the scheduled time, we have just five minutes left in the session. But let's open it up for a Q and A. If there's any, uh, if anyone needs to drop, then please, of course, go ahead and drop. Uh, and we'll just take your questions one by one. Um, so Yevabel, there's a question. Ala, Alel Yen asks, is the task going to be profession, profession specific or common for everyone, given that everyone has a different study background? And for everyone else, you can either put your questions in the text, in the chat box, or you can queue up with your hands up as you prefer. Yeah. yeah so the, the tasks would almost always have a domain in their own, right? So, but the skills, are transferable. And given that we are focusing, I think just the whole training has the two things to achieve. Of course, to share in the project management sphere and to apply um, AI, generative AI in particular, driving in that line, in project management. So, but the projects are different and they happen to be in different um, areas, in different domains. So that means we will have a very multi-domain challenge, but asking similarly within each of them, you apply project management techniques and you apply basically acceleration. By acceleration means using generative AI to accelerate your, your every process. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, okay. Collagio asks, is there any need to download any software or platform uh, in addition to uh, Slack and 10X? So I think it'll depend week to week. Uh, we, will, we will be using different software or different platforms, but, uh, and Yevaba will correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think there's anything essential that we need anyone to procure or install uh, right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think we try to minimize that one, given that these days, you know, many of the generative AI tools are available. Um, for example, if you use just the Edge uh, browser, which is from Microsoft, you know, which is like Chrome, but uh, they have adopted it. They have their own copilot and you can use, you know, they have, I think, 25 questions uh, per day that they give you for free, but you can really interact. The chat, uh, the, the, the Edge chat is already, will give you, and there are many of like that. Therefore, we are not, I think a browser is mostly what it is. And if there are so sometimes, like for example, if we are using maybe, um, then it should be just project-based, but not particularly for, for that really much. Uh, okay, so Bubakar Barry asks, how many hours are required in a day and are they flexible? So Bubakar, we've designed the training to be asynchronous, which means that there are no mandatory sessions, um, but there are a lot of support sessions. So we have our daily stand-up and we are gonna keep that short, but that's a good way to stay in touch with uh, where other people are, what challenges they're facing. Um, announcements probably, they're gonna happen on Slack as well. But if you spend, uh, if you want to have one mandatory half an hour a day, I think attending the daily stand-up is a great way and an important way to uh, stay in touch with the training and also to get to know some of the other people. So you have the daily stand-up, we'll have uh, one to two hours of tutorials per day, which may be useful for you to pick up skills that you don't have. If you know how to do that particular area, then you can always watch the tutorial afterwards. They will be recorded, they will be updated. We have community building sessions that we would encourage you to attend and drop into. Those will usually be held on Slack and that's a way to get to know your fellow colleagues and just not to feel alone as it's, an, it's a remote training. Um, so long story short, uh, in terms of synchronous hours or mandatory hours where you have to be available when we ask you to, there are no required hours. But our estimate, and that comes from how we've designed the training, is you need to spend about 20 hours a week in order to get the required amount of work done. So why that amount of time? Because we want to make sure that by the end of the training, you are able to be comfortable and to demonstrate your uh, not just knowledge of, but fluency and familiarity and good profile in the skills that we're providing. And so 20 hours a week in our mind 
is a couple of hours uh, every day, could be one to two, could be two to three during the weekdays, and then probably um, more hours on the weekend. It could be six hours, could be eight hours. It depends on how you want to divide up your time. Kahir asks, what makes this training from another? I assume the question is, what makes our training different from one another? Um, so we're in 2024. And I think one of the most, uh, one of the truths is that there's no shortage of knowledge and there's no shortage of opportunities. Um, so all of that to say that there are, there are different training options that are out there and we are unapologetic about uh, sticking to our approach. Um, and our approach is that we want people to focus on improving their employability. It's fine if you know something, it's great if you got 100% on an exam, but if you're not able to, uh, whatever you have learned, whatever you're able to do, if it doesn't help you get a better job, then we are not, uh, I won't say, I guess we can say fairly that we're not interested. We're here to help you get a better job. We're here to help you get a promotion in your current job. And so our approach is let's figure out what industry is looking for or what would help everyone here either get a better job or get a promotion in their current job and then we want to provide that knowledge to you in an effective way. And what is that effective way for us? One is, as Yavabel said, that it's accessible to everyone. So everyone is here, and thanks to the support of our donor, there's no course fee which is assessed, so it's accessible. That's fine, there's other trainings out there that don't charge you anything. We want to make it very community rich. We don't want you to be sitting there alone and to have, and to, have to learn or to do assignments um, by yourself. In our opinion, a, that doesn't work, and B, you end up learning less because when you learn with other people, you get a much richer, much more deep set of knowledge. So we are a community-rich training. We will be giving you individualized feedback on how your different assignments went. Um, and then I think the fact that we're staying on top of what industry is looking for today and it's up to date is also, I would say, um, a differentiator. The fourth part, I think, and this goes to the content, is that we... You know, I think Yevabel said it well, if you do 10 hours of work in one hour, we want to make sure that you have ideas on what to use those nine hours for. You know, you could watch TikTok for nine hours, but if you develop the right culture, then you can find other things that you want to do instead of watching TikTok for nine hours. And once you get that circle really going and that culture and that mindset and other people to work with, we, we have seen that's where people's careers really take off. So that's, uh, that's a brief answer to what makes this training different from others. Ethan asks, are tutorials given before the tasks or challenges that give directions or how to complete them? I think those are staged in such a way that they're given in time to finish the challenges. We have the really important submission is the end of the week. It's Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC. If you're not familiar with UTC, it's similar to GMT. Please make yourself familiar with that. The tutorials are given throughout the week and uh, everything that you need is either given in the tutorial or you can ask a question on Slack and you will get a sufficient level of support and guidance in order to complete the assignments. If you want to do really well, you want to really understand, then you do need to invest a little bit of time reading and learning. The tutorials will support you, but uh, to really understand everything, you will need to go a little bit deeper. Mawuli, the browser's name is Edge. So Microsoft's browser, Edge, E-D-G-E. -E. Yeah, it's already, the link is there. Oh, sorry, you have already answered that. Tahir already asked. Uh, yeah, we'll be getting a certificate of completion. Every single person will have a graduation ceremony. Every person that finishes will get a certificate of completion. Um, the grading is done. I think we can handle that as maybe a more detailed question. But we have a set of rubrics that's uh, provided. You'll be graded against those rubrics. You get detailed feedback uh, point by point by point, as well as uh, written feedback. If you have any questions about how the grading or that specific grade that you got, then you can always come back to us and we'll, uh, we can discuss that. Uh, Rhoda says, how can a candidate going for an entry-level role in human resources leverage on the training you've undertaken? That's a great question. So human resources uh, is a difficult job. Human resources means that you need to be able to scan different uh, CVs. You need to be able to track different CVs. You want to be able to understand um, what else might this person have been done. Your job is to evaluate uh, their communication skills, their technical skills. You have to set up interviews. 
you have to uh, have email follow-up. And so there's different ways that the tools that we will provide you will help you in terms of collecting CVs or uh, setting up applications, that's one. Two is tracking CVs and your communication with that person. The third is will help you in evaluating um, that person's, the candidate's uh, competencies around communication as well as technical competencies. The fourth is documentation. So how do you document all of this information? The fifth is how do you store all of this information so it's available in a different way? So those are just five that come to mind right away. So I think human resources is one use case, but uh, the training that we're providing is useful to almost any use case, I would say, uh, where project management is required. Iren asks, uh, every activity has time allocated to it. Do we have to do it in that way or you can do it at your own pace? Iren, and I, I'm sorry if I'm not saying your name perfectly, um, you don't have to follow the schedule exactly. These are resources that we are providing to you. We're not expecting every single person to attend every single session. You can follow it at your own pace. We would encourage you to drop in and drop out. Um, if you can attend the stand-ups, I think that's to your own benefit. Um, the tutorials will be recorded and uploaded online. And one of the most important things that we provide is using Slack. If you have a question, you don't know what to do, ask a question, use the all week one channel, and next week you'll use all week two. And within five minutes, you will get an answer either from our team of tutors who will be introduced or someone else from the community will be answering that question. Is it possible to ask about cohort B? So Ferris, I think uh, let's handle cohort B offline. Um, yeah, Cohort B is part of the intensive training. Ferris is asking a question about that application process. So Ferris, I would ask you to write to train at tenacademy.org. If you haven't gotten an answer, then I'm going to put my email right here. And you can always write to me directly just to make sure that you get uh, an answer. Is the training time constant uh, after work? I think we're going to be following more or less, that's the same, a similar schedule each week. Each week, it may uh, change by a little bit, but you can expect a morning stand-up uh, about afternoon or a noon community building session, and the submissions will be Wednesday end of day and Saturday end of day. So those are those are kind of the the framework of the structures. They may adjust uh, a little bit, and those will be communicated in advance. We handle the certificate of completion question. Internship opportunities, we don't provide formal internship opportunities, no. Um, we What we do do, and we think this is our approach, is to say we want to prepare you to be able to apply for jobs on your own. Um, and in another way, what we've seen is that an internship, many people do internships because they want experience to write on their CVs. Noel, what you will have at the end of the training is a set of 10 to 12 different projects that you can showcase as part of your CV or on your own website. And that we find more valuable than having an internship opportunity. When you can go to an employer or as part of an interview and say, here are five projects where I've used ChatGPT or here's a Notion database that I put up, or this is how I used uh, GitHub Copilot, or this is how I used uh, tool ABC. I can guarantee you that working together, we can find out how to show that as useful work relevant experience. So we, short answer, no, but longer answer, we provide something that we think is more valuable. I mean, I wanna add just absolutely, considering this as internship is probably a good bet if you spend, of course, enough time, but that is how this is mirroring work. And if you perform good on the challenge, it's more or less similar in my opinion, because we follow exactly job environment more than learning environment. <clears throat> Chantal, yes, I would say so. Um, you could apply for project management roles after the 12 weeks is up. But it's if you want a really good project management job, then you need to do, uh, you have to put in a commensurate amount of effort. So if you have absolutely no project management experience and you want to apply for a really top flight project management job, then uh, it means you need to really Put the effort in week on week. If you're already working and you're experienced and you have a little bit of time, then of course put in your your results will be commensurate with your effort. But the program has been designed so that people who complete all the assignments well should be able to apply for a project management job successfully 
after the 12 weeks is up. Recognizing that uh, landing an actual job going through the interview process uh, is something that by itself takes a couple of months. Adam Admas, yes, the schedule is flexible. Um, so there are no mandatory sessions. We encourage every single person to attend the stand-ups, uh, tutorials that are important. We would love to see you in the community building sessions because it's a good way to get to know other people. Um, the hand-in times, there's, we have a late policy which incentivizes handing in early or on time. If you hand in on time, we give you a 20% bonus on your grade as that's useful for your leaderboard performance. If you hand in one minute to one day late, then there's no penalty, but no bonus. And anything after one day late, um, you're, you will still get a grade, but that doesn't count towards your leaderboard. So the schedule is flexible. It is designed to be asynchronous. Um, Luol, no, you shouldn't get worried on Slack saying there's 20 days left in the trial. That's going to get fixed. Um, don't worry about that. That's something I'm not sure why you're seeing that too, but I guess, yeah, that's how it is. Also, have no prior knowledge of project management. Will this training give enough information to follow along? Yes, Noel, we're not expecting. We've designed this to be open to people without having a background in project management. Uh, Al Alaleng, uh, is the task going to be designed to submit in a scheduled time or within the day? It's not within the day. It's Wednesdays and Saturdays. Those are when the tasks have to be submitted. You don't have to hand in anything today. You don't have to hand in anything tomorrow. Um, to hear the tutorials are offered to everyone altogether. We don't have specialized tutorials. That being said, if there's a specific question or there's a group uh, of people who want extra support or something new, you can always ask. And if there's a large enough group or there's really a gap in the knowledge, then we are here to provide uh, support to you to improve your employability. So if there's a group that has questions on, I don't know, I mean, Maybe there's a group here who wants a nice demo on how uh, they've heard about a term like uh, data engineering or machine learning, and people want a quick demo or a tutorial on that. If there's enough interest on that, sure. If people want a guest talk um, on somebody on how they use uh, AI in the hospitality sector, then we can try and arrange a guest talk in that area. If somebody wants a special talk from somebody who uh, has, is an expert chat GPT user, we can also try and arrange that. So we we have our program structure, but within that, uh, we do have flexibility. And what unlocks that flexibility is uh, the group being open and asking questions and being present. And we will do our best to, we can't satisfy all requests, but we're going to do our best to satisfy, um, to satisf satisfy requests that come up. Brian asks, how do you join the channel? You can't find it on the Slack app. Brian, you should have gotten an email, um, which gives you a link to join our Slack group. Just to get the terminology right, Slack app is fine. The, the workspace that we have is uh, 10 Academy UTJ. You should have gotten an email. If you don't have an email, then please write to utj at 10 and uh, they will be able to provide the link to you. Any last questions, anyone? So the Slack app link isn't working. So if a if Yenwi and Firosma, um, please check your email. If your those are not working, uh, if the link that you have gotten is not working, then please email utj at ten at tenacademy.org, and we'll get you an answer uh, almost right away, as soon as we can. Maybe we can post the Slack link here. I think the link was actually posted. Uh, I'm actually going to scroll up. Yeah, it's been shared above. I'm going to share it again right now, and that should allow you. Yeah, so for Osma and uh, if Yenwi, that should be the link to allow you to join the Slack group. Uh, if that doesn't work, then you can always email UTJ at 10 Academy. And that's kind of the, the last, that's the support team. If I invite members, are they going to get a certificate of completion as well? Um, so. So Bubakar, please have a look at the schedule. I'm going to post the schedule here to make sure that everyone uh, knows how to find it. And uh, Jeff, if you invite a member, look, I think at this point, we if there's somebody who's going to attend the training for this week, we may be able to accept them. So Jeff, if you could write to uh, use Slack and write to Makita 
and uh, just let them know the situation, then I'm sure we can admit them for this week. Yeah, I don't think that'll be a problem. Maybe just Arun, I think that's the a very important part. If you're not registered, it is almost impossible to provide resources. So they must go through the, the registration process if they come in new. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be challenging. Yeah. Yeah, and so that I think that's that's a good point. If there's if you want to attend, then we there it's there is some formality that we have to put into place so that we are able to make we're able to provision resources for you properly, that everyone gets their certificates. We know how many people are attending. Um, we can provide you with grading. We can provide you with feedback. Um, yeah. So Noel, yeah, I think yeah, it's like make sure that if you are inviting your friends, just send them the macadats.tenacademy.org and and then you know you can feel that they can fill the form and all that process should be followed so that they get access to tenex slack and other things so otherwise they will basically be maybe the gmt can share with them and they can join but they can't join every other resource including the challenge document unless you show. so it's it's not going to work that way so if you have friends who are interested this week, make sure that they are registered and they are properly, um, you know, in the system. Yeah, and so I th we may still have some access uh, issues for 10x. Noel, there's the uh, 10x support channel, so you can write. Barricade is active on the group. I've seen him responding already. As mentioned, uh, give us today. Let's work today, and it'll take a, maybe even a little bit longer to get all the different access issues sorted out. So, yeah that's uh but we're gonna handle them so you know where to find us any other questions guys does anyone if we is there anyone who wants to give us a response we've been talking now for so allah go ahead and while allah is unmuting if anyone has a response if anyone has you know we've asked for questions if anyone wants to give us a response from the training community we'd be happy to have one or two reflections Allah, did you have a question? You had your hand raised. So, are there one or two people who want to uh, who want to give us a response? Arun, I think we can hear you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, so I was saying, thanks, Barakat. So I was saying, just to summarize, is there anyone who wants to um, to kind of give us a response? And if not, then let's wrap up. Um, in summary, Slack is the primary method that we want to use for asking questions, resolving any access issues to 10x, um, or if you want one of your friends to register this week. That's the primary communication method. If there are issues, if you can't get into Slack, you can email you, number two, j at 10academy.org, and we can sort you out. Uh, over the next 12 weeks, we're going to be teaching you and working with you to uh, show how to use AI tools to improve your skills uh, in project management applicable to many different industries. There was a question about HR, human resources. We'll be covering a number of other industries as well. We'll also be covering career skills. And the whole point of this exercise, the whole point of the next 12 weeks, is to give each and every person here the skills, the knowledge, uh, the ideas, and the attitudes taken together, the competencies to help you get a better job, to improve your current job, to improve your career skills. And that'll be uh, experienced through either an increase in employment, the ability to change the society around you, um, let's say, to use your time in a better way. So we're very happy to have you here on the journey with us. We're thankful to our financial supporter for this program, the GitLab Foundation, um, and especially to each of you for having the interest in um, improving your, your own careers and, I guess, the world around you. Thank you very much.
we can stop recording. So this meeting is now